Good evening, everyone. Tewksbury Zoning Board of Appeals for May 27th, 2021 is in session. First item on the agenda, approval of the minutes of April 29th, 2021. Move the, we approve the minutes from uh, April 29, 21. Motion has been made. Anyone second? Nancy, I'll, I'll second that. that. I have to abstain. I wasn't here. Right. No, I second that. Can you hear me? I can now. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. All right. So tonight we're missing two members. Melissa will not be here, so I have to read all the agenda. And Dan's not coming. So does anyone, um, zoning board members, does anyone have a preference on cases they want to be on, cases they can't be on, anything? Because I'll just pick who to put on what. I, I don't have want. any preference. No, no problem. I don't either. No problems. Okay. So the continued hearing, when I call for it, the continued hearing is going to be myself, Nancy, and Mike, I'm going to put you on that because that was Dan. But okay. he's not here tonight, so instead of continuing that again, we'll uh, we'll put us three on it. So, you know what? Just as we go along, I'll say who's on them. All right. So, first continued hearing on the agenda: Harold and Linda McCarthy under Mass General Law <laughs> Chapter Forty A, Section Eight, as a party agreed by a decision made by the building inspector in a letter dated February seventeenth. 2021 said property is located at 325 Marshall Street assesses map 32 lot 3 zoned residential uh, attorney Plunkett yes uh, good evening uh, mr. chairman members of the board um, again this is a continuation from the last meeting uh, online tonight are uh, Harold and Linda McCoppin petitioners uh, this is Joanne Deller is with uh, the McCarthy's, if there's any questions. But at the last meeting, we did a pretty thorough uh, analysis and review of our submittal letter, uh, the narrative that was submitted with the uh, application. And we had broken it down to three points. I believe the first two points that we left off that everyone was in agreement that there was a determination that there wasn't a violation as concerned by the building inspector relative to the first two points. The third point was left in abeyance and continued to tonight's meeting so that we could address the issue relative to the uh, approval by the DPW uh, concerning water and adequate town water and municipal sanitary sewer. Uh, I had forwarded to uh, the uh, admin, uh, uh, Ms. Lauder, uh, for submittal to all the board members, a copy of the uh, sign-off by both the town engineer and the DPW, uh, which they have indicated that they have approved the sewer and the water permit for the site on the building permit request. So that was sent over to the uh, planning office and the request is made to forward it to all members of the uh, of the ZBA. So hopefully, Mr. Chairman, that has uh, reached all the board members. And I think with that, we have addressed the final issue uh, relative to you know whether there is adequate water and sewer, and we have the appropriate sign off by engineering and DPW. And therefore, I think that we're set for a final determination by the board. All right. Uh, we do have that paper in our packets. It's board members. It's the only paper that came for this agenda item in the new packet. Okay. Um, any board members have questions? I don't have any. That's that's what I was stuck on. Is that? Um, yeah, I don't have any either. None at all. All right. Um, you know what? Let me give this number. So, if anyone would like to call in for this item. Uh, the number is 781-565-8134. Again, 781-565-8134, and that's for anyone who wants to call in. Um, anything else, Attorney Plunkett? Uh, just as a recap, Mr. Chairman, I, I you know, believe uh, 
as per the last discussion at the last meeting, the uh, McCarthy's party agreed by the determination of the building commissioner and that we have proven uh, that we have submitted sufficient information to the board uh, that the board is in the position to reverse the commissioner's determination and then now their uh, decision and allow the building permit to be issued. Okay, anything else board members? No, nothing for me. All right, if somebody would like to make a motion, to no, nope, I'm sorry. Being a public hearing, we have to open it to the public at this time. If there's anyone that would like to call 781-565-8134, if they have any comments, concerns, uh, we'll give that a minute. See if anyone calls in on it. Is there anyone on the line for this one, Jason? No calls for this item, Mr. Chairman. All right, so let's give it a minute or two, see if anyone calls in and uh, we'll close both parts of the hearing. <coughs> All right, I'm sure if anyone had a comment, they would have been on the line already. Mm -hmm. Nothing, Jason. Still no callers. All right. If somebody would like to make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. I'd like to make a motion to close both parts of the hearing for Harold and Linda McCarthy under master in our laws. No, no, no. Motion has been made. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion to made. Close both parts and second. And all in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Any discussion? No. I don't have any. All right. Somebody now, this one being. Hold on, I got too many agendas in front of me. All right, so this one being a party aggrieved, we always make the motion in the affirmative. So it would be, it would, oh, I can't think of the word. It would be a motion for an approval for the party aggrieved, and then if we disagree with it, we would vote no. Does everyone understand that? We always we always make the motion in the affirmative. So if somebody would like to make that motion. I'd like to make a motion to agree. Go to approve. The, to approve. Yep. And Harold and Linda McCarthy under Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 8, as a party, as party aggrieved by discussion by dis decision made by the building inspector and letter dated February 17th, 2021. Said property is located at 325 Marshall Street, Assessor's Map 32, Lot 3, Zoned Residential. It's continued from 429. All right, so now the motion you just made is to uphold the building inspector's decision. Mm -hmm. So if we want to let them build, then we uh, vote no. If we agree with the building inspector, we vote yes. Is that clear? Yeah. All right. So motion has been made. I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Seeing one. Aye. Uh, okay. Seeing two. Opposed? Myself. Nay. Okay. So the motion will pass. You can build it. Okay. All right. Uh, again, I, it's kind of an odd, so as I understand it, we're allowed to get the building permit and continue with the. Uh, yes, we, we always vote. We always make our motions in the affirmative. So if we make a okay. motion affirmative, yep. we're standing with the building inspector. I okay. voted nay. So you're all set. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So the next item on the. Thank you. Good luck. So the next item on the agenda will be myself, Ray, and Mike. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, All right. Closer. Next item on the agenda is yeah. What's that? Rachel and Naylan say on. I am sorry about that. All right. Who's who's got to hit mute? Thank you. Meeting. From a variance from section 4120, put change of lot of the Tewksbury zoning bylaws to facilitate the conveyance of land upon which a single family dwelling will be built 
as shown on plans filed with this board, said property is located at 444 North Bill Ricker Road slash 247 High Street Bill Ricker. Assessors map 2, lot 12, zoned residential. And who do we have for this one? I think they just dropped. Terry Medeiros here. Yeah. Are you here for this? Attorney, I'm here for the, uh, the 444 North Polka Road. Yes. 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 It's quite, um, but for the record, my name's George Medeiros. I represent the uh, applicant uh, petitioners on this matter. Um, I'm not sure. Do we have a majority of the board here? I'm not, I just can't tell by looking at my Zoom screen who's. Yes, if, yeah, you do. Because I don't know if I do I have to get a. Is this a five member board or is that what this is? I can't, I, get, I lost my audio. I can't hear it. Uh, no, you we didn't. Can, I can hear you. No, uh, you didn't lose the audio. I forgot to hit unmute. Uh, yeah, we're a five member board. You got four members here tonight. So I need a clean, clean sweep to get a variance. Is that correct? Is that my interpretation? Yep. yep. Okay. Three members make a quorum. Mm -hmm. But I need, I need to get a variance. I need four, four out of four, or four out of five normally. Uh, three voting would be enough for you. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. For the, uh, like I said, my name is George Medeiros. So I represent the petitioners on this matter. Um, just to give a little bit of background, I, I don't know if the what I could probably, I don't know. I'm just as put off by this uh, video meeting as anyone else, I guess, and, and kind of old school. I don't know if I could share my screen so I could see the the uh, plan, so I could guide the board through the uh, through it. Or yeah, you can um, you can share can your try. screen. I can try. I guess. What's how's that sound? Jason, can you help them? Yeah, I just made him a presenter. So down below there should be a share button. In the interface, can it, can the board member see that screen? Once you share it, we should be able to. Oh, I guess I'm trying to. Well, the good thing is yeah. next month we'll be back at town hall. All right, I'm pressing the share screen. If you could help me through this, I guess. Which one would I be pressing after that? Uh, it should be should be an option for your desktop. There we go. It's coming through now. Is that it? Can the board see, can the board see that screen now? Yeah, keep can in mind board? everything everything that's on your screen is on TV right now. So all right, because so, yeah, so the board can see my this plan. Is that correct? Yep. Well we can see <clears throat> no. I don't think we no. box open yet. You have to click you have to open up the application, open it up. I I, go go uh, where it where you have PDF on it. Click on where it says PDF. Click there, go all the way over the left. All right, right. Click on. Right. Now come down. I'm just not down where it says scroll, scroll down where it says B. Took spree plan. I think I can see in your PDF. Open that yeah, up. I, uh, and I can see it on my screen, so I don't know why you can't see. You got to double click on it, Gus. Where am I double clicking? If you go back to the share button, you're sharing a, uh, a one of your windows. So you have to share the document, the window that has the document open. Okay. I think I'm going to fail. I'm going to, I anticipating I'm going to fail on this. Yeah. Let me try this. Sorry to jump in, but if you want to minimize the window, maybe it's down below. <clears throat> I'm saying Window Explorer. Yeah, will that share it? Is it sharing right now? So I guess I can't. Yeah, we can't see. We just see the Windows Explorer window. So it, can you double click that um, Tewksbury plan file? I. It's on my screen, so I don't know what's what it's telling you. Okay, at the bottom of your screen, there's a share button. If you click that up, there'll be a number of little icons in there. One of them should say Adobe. If you click on that, it should show. I say, I, on the top of my screen, I got a share button. It says share content. Would that be what I've been pressing? Sure. Okay. Yes. Be a different location. Yeah. And then it should give you of options of what you want to share. 
I want to share my Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to have to speak through the plan because I I, I, I don't seem to be familiar. That's right. We enough. have we all we all have copies of the plan. All right. Well, if you can click the place. if you could click the stop sharing option. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Before, before, you, before you before you go on. All right. Try it again one more time. See if you can get that okay. screen that you want. Click, click the share button. Yes. Click on the, the file that you want to share. Just try it one more time. We'll wait. When I go to Window Explorer. All right, you're starting yeah. to share. Now that screen right there. Yes. Right. Can you minimize that screen? Because it looks like what you're trying to share is underneath it. Yep, minimize that. Okay. Or, or even close it. No, that's the document you want, right? Right. I want to share this Tuxbury plan. Right. If you double click it open, does it open? Yes, and I I can see it. So right. I can because see what it you my... did, what you did is you opened only the Explorer version. What you need to share is full screen, and not just the actual document. Right, but what's behind it? Isn't that the document behind it? The way yes. we're looking at it. Mm. Close. I don't think so. Close. Go back up to your X there. Can you? Yep, there you go. All right. All right. Tell us. Tell us about it. All right. All right. Say, so, um, what we have here is the, the is a possible property. It's on High Street in Bulwicker. It's all in the frontage is entirely in High Street in Bulwicker. The land is divided by the Tewksbury Bulwicker line. So, portion of the property is in Tewksbury. Portion of the property is in Bulwicker. Yeah, actually, there is an existing house there where the uh, uh, petitioner lives at 440 uh, North. It's called North Florica Road. I'm not too sure why, because of the fact that you know, all the frontage is in on High Street. But half that property, half that dwelling is not half, but half, say half, is half is in Bulwicker and half is in Tewksbury. The property is sort of a U shape. It has 130 feet of frontage north of the uh, town of Bulwicker Cemetery. And then there's another 150 feet of frontage south of the town of Bolivia Cemetery. What the applicant is, has proposed to do is divide the property in two so that is 27, it is, right now it's a 54,000 square foot parcel. So there'll be two parcels, one each parcel would have 27,000 square feet. And the parcel in Bolivia, we've already gone before the Board of Appeals in Bolivia and been granted a variance to construct a house strictly in on the Bulwicker, in Bulwicker, on the, uh, would be the lot B on your plan. And lot A would remain as the, uh, in, in, as it exists now. The plan has been taken before the planning board of uh, the town of Tewksbury and has been endorsed as approval not required. We've gone before the planning board of the town of Bulwicker they plan, they approved it under subdivision control law and that plan has been recorded. The issue before the board is because we are going to be changing the size of the lot, however, we're not looking for a building permit for Tewksbury, but we still are going to be diminishing the size of the lot. So in, to make sure that this remaining house isn't considered a legally existing or not in violation, we need a variance to change the size of the lot under your section uh, 21, I'm sorry, 4120. Basic plus for why we want that is we don't want the house to be considered not in violation of, in, considered to be in violation of zoning because we have some concern if anything ever happened to the house, some shop law uh, insurance agency or insurance company would say, well, we don't have to cover that, that house because it was in violation of zoning when we subdivided. The reason why my client is looking for this uh, to survive the property is presently, I don't think, board, hopefully the board members had a chance to go out there and look at the lot. Because of the town of Brooker's cemeteries and, and projects into this property, it makes the southern portion of the property look like it's wholly separate from the current owner. And it appears to be almost like a vacant piece of land. 
this is you know attracts people that you know put trash there for mill rims there they can see these piles of trash that have been dumped over the years this town of uh, Boroka cemetery all the placards have been actually violated and removed over the years the only one that's remaining is the one for rogers that marks the actual tomb all the other placards are bigger the town of brooker does mow that cemetery there was a, i think there was an agreement from the board from the zoning board of the town of Boroka that there'll be more security actually for that cemetery if there was actually a house beside it. This would discourage people from trying to throw trash as they go by or throw dump trash on the property. It's just a um, just too hard for my client, really a hardship for my client to maintain it. And so that's why we're looking for it. I know this board has a like a three prong test to make sure that we uh, are entitled to a variance. We think we can satisfy that three prong test because we're the hardship that exists with him trying to maintain and police this property, it would be off certainly in the public interest that there is a second house that's constructed there that would be uh, act as additional security for the neighborhood. And it really wouldn't de de degrade from the intent of the uh, zoning bylaw because the spacing of the houses would be in compliance. The house that's going to exist there would be 200 feet away. The house on the left, right hand side, that would also be. 200 feet away. The house behind it would be over 325 feet away. Um, we did put on the plan at the back of Lot B that there'll be a 20 foot no cut tree border. We wanted to be good neighbors and so that we make sure that we think there are some mature trees back here. Not a lot, there's brushing been cut down, but there are some mature trees back there which ensure privacy for the existing homes that are uh, behind the property. And um, I think that's a, about it for side of the board. So I think we satisfied the three prong test. It's it's really a question that we want to make sure that all our eyes are dotted and fees across, so that we are in compliance with the uh, Tewksbury zoning bylaws to change the size of the lot. Let me ask you a question. You sure. said you went to the planning board and got yes. a a subdivision approval. Which planning yep. board, Tewksbury or Bill Ricca? I went to both. And they and both so the approved. They were both were approved, and if I call it my plan, I, would, I don't know if I follow that one, but I can, that's one of the plans I could show you, but it, 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 the, the, there was an endorsement. I actually had two endorsement blocks for the plan. One was for the planning board from the town of Tewksbury. That was, we went to that meeting, and they said planning board uh, approval was not required. And so it was endorsed as an NRA uh, plan. And uh, there was a second block of it. That same plan was taken to the town of Borker for approval under subdivision control law. We had a little bit of different interpretations between the two towns. They also endorsed it. So the plan's been basically endorsed by both the planning board of Borker and the planning board of Tewksbury, and that plan has been recorded. Okay. And on your proposed lot A, yes. number, number 444, is that the existing house that's there now? That's the existing house that's been there. You, on this plan, there's no proposed buildings. You're just no uh, on proposed. the plan. It shows on I mean, lot A says a proposed building envelope. You usually, we usually the way we handle it in old record is we don't usually show the house on the plan because then you better come in right on the num numbers. If you don't, then you've got to go back to board. So anywhere within that envelope, the house can be built. Hmm. So that's how we do, do it, and so. As long as we're 35 feet back from the street, 15 feet from each side boundary, there's there there anywhere in that that envelope there could be a house built. It's not good. It's not going to fill up the whole envelope, obviously, because that'll be no. I, I I understand what you're trying to do here, because about half of that, even more than half, a lot A is in Tewksbury. Yeah. Is so the house address is Tewksbury or Bill Ricker? The new lot would be Bill Ricker. It actually has a number that's been assigned to it, 247 High Street. Will be the new number for lot B. Yep. Lot A, the existing house number, uh, address for that house is 444 North Borica Road, Tewksbury. I don't know how it came to have that as an address because like I say, it's frontage is all on High Street. And so why was assigned a, um, a Tewksbury address? I'm not too certain. I believe they get the storage, the service 444 storages by Tewksbury. And so there might be some type of uh, technicality where they can 
I believe there is some type of case law if your house is in both in two towns, you're entitled to the services of both communities. And so that's only, and I'm really guessing here, why it ended up with that house address. Okay, so if on lot A, yeah, the house that was, yeah. I, now, are, you, are you thinking about putting another house on that lot or just no, sell no, them off the other piece? No, no, we're gonna keep that house. That house is in really good, really well maintained and good condition inside at 444. Okay. So, but just as another point, that house at 444 was built in 1950. Yep. It was on a lot that was like a 14, I mean, you can see if there's an existing area was 14,876 square feet. That was just, that was, lot was separate. They also had a separate lot, uh, 15,000 square feet on where the lot B is located. At some point in time, the lots were joined together by a non-buildable lot when they carried out the subdivision behind it. And they sort of shot themselves in the foot by doing that because now they linked all the land together. And so any grandfather status possibilities of having two houses there was lost by linking them together. I felt that the house on lot A where it was built in 1950 was considered a previously non-existent uh, conforming lot and therefore any issues regarding it being rebuilt would be protected as a grandfather lot in that status. The, um, the building inspector feels that once it's all became one parcel, that now it's become conforming, and so now you've got to go back and get a variance to diminish its size. Right. And you're looking for a variance under 4120 just yeah. for the, the acre lot. Right? Not any lot. Right, right, right. Exactly. So it won't be an acre lot. It won't be an acre lot. It only have 130 feet of frontage versus the where the new lot is, has 150 feet of frontage and granted a variance of a worker line for that type of frontage in areas. So it is, it, it's, it's a little bit of a unique situation, obviously, because of the fact that it's a U-shaped lot, it's in two different towns, you're, you're trying to comply with the, the zoning requirements of two different towns at the same time. And this has been, you know, this has been a long process because of that. But like, it seems to be like the final, this is, like I say, the final board and the final issue is to make sure that the house is not is it going to be construed as being in violation of the Tuxbury zoning bylaws. So technically the town of Bill Ricketts Cemetery is in Tuxbury. No, that's Bill, no, no, that's Bill Ricketts. That's Bill Ricketts. The town well, of that's... Tuxbury, that's Bill Ricketts. The Tuxbury line is behind it. So the, right, front, but... part, part, the front part of the lot, you can see down the middle of the, Property says so town um, Bullocker. So your your house yep. at four forty four, that technically is in Tuxbury. Uh, the back part, the back part, the front, well, have, the front of have, the lot is still in Bullocker. You have a Tuxbury address, right? But it has a Tuxbury. So if you address. have a Tuxbury address, lot A, I would consider a Tuxbury lot. I know it's right. half and half, but but it's yep. got a Tuxbury address, right? And before your dividing line, you've got the town of Bill Ricker Cemetery. Which would right. lead you to it's just kind of odd. Yeah. But the town broker is in Bo that town broker cemetery is in Boroka. It might be the back, very back tippity corner. It looks like this slightly extends into Tuxbury. But the whole rest of the cemetery seems to be in Boroka. And I'm sure that's the reason why is I'm saying you get they used to measure, you know, things back then with a chain, a ten foot chain stretching it through the woods. Now there's so scopes and stuff and they pick up a slight, slight, slight encroachment into Tuxbury. So when this was one lot, right? When this was one lot, or it still is one lot, mm -hmm. you you did not have continuous frontage on this lot. That's correct. That's correct. There's 130 so feet right now. There's 130 feet in, uh, in High Street, uh, north of the cemetery. Then there's uh, frontage of 150 feet south of the Tuxbury. If you go from the north end of this. Uh, a lot on High Street to the south end, it's 385 feet because the cemetery is in between. And that's, right. That's... So, how did they even calculate frontage on it? Because the lot does have frontage on it. I'm saying they, the frontage is there's 130 feet north of the cemetery, and then there's 150 feet south of the cemetery. Right, but frontage should be continuous. Well, there's a, it's not continuous because of it's, the fact that the cemetery is in between. It's, it's bizarre. It, it's a yeah. bizarre situation. 
And that's what's that, and that really leads directly to his hardship is because the fact that it looks like, well, you got a house up there north of the cemetery, and then there's nothing south of the cemetery. Right. But it's actually the same lot. It's like a big U. Right. It's bizarre. Uh, any questions, board members? No. Who else is on this, Ray? No questions. I thought the uh, description uh, was uh, well done in the packet. Thank you. Even without the shared screen? I wish I, I had all the all the things I, in the packet. I have all the diagrams and everything, so I was able to follow along pretty easily. Well, well thank you. Because I, I can look glaily. I can hardly wait to have in person meetings back again because I, I'm surprised. Actually, I've been practicing in Florida for 38, nine years, and this is the first opportunity I've had to practice before the board um, up here before the board to expire. Um, and I kind of actually surprised myself when I saw that. And of course, What's this is probably, probably the worst. Generic grounds for trying to do it. I guess the technology. I'm an old attorney, and I feel like the technology is going faster than I can keep up with. What's the uh, zoning requirements in Bill Rucker? The zoning requirement is actually fifty thousand square feet. It's and uh, two hundred feet of frontage. They've got variance to bring it down to one hundred fifty feet and to twenty seven thousand square feet of the area. Oh, but we will meet the set. We will meet the setbacks. We'll meet the head requ height requirement. They want 200 feet of frontage. Yeah. Huh? And yeah. over, what's that, an acre and a quarter? Yeah, 50 dollars about an acre and a quarter. So it's, it is quite large there. They they seem like they didn't uh, concern. Because if you look at the, a little bit further on to the right side, it shows there's an existing easement there. That's yep. on the lot next door. That also gives it more privacy. So it se seems like that this lot is, Surrounded by things that isolate it, and therefore, that you know that you are not violating the tent of the zoning bylaw because it seems like it's isolated already. Right. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting parcel, that's for sure. Well, so this was a, seems like a law school exam question. Question. All right. All right. Uh, nothing from the board members. Nothing. Okay. All right. So, being a public hearing. We'll open it to the public at this time. Phone number is 781-565-8134. And do we have any callers? Mr. Caller, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a caller for this item. Well, go ahead, call him. Give us your name and your address, please. She might be muted. At, she could be watching it on the TV. Let's give it a few seconds here. Yep. Okay, I do have her on the line. Go ahead, caller, please. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Um, Kathy Anderson, 61 Heinrich Drive in Pittsburgh. Right, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. What would you like to say? Uh, Kathy Anderson, 61 Heinrich Drive. Okay, that, go, go ahead. We were listening and we were just had a question. Um, we were wondering if anything was has, is going to be changing from the planning of board approval from the town of Arica. I can answer that question. There's no change in the plan. That's sort of why I wanted to show it. But this is the same plan that went to the, plan, uh, the planning board. It, shows the it does show the 20 foot um, no cut tree zone at the back of the lot. The same dimension. It, it just like say we, um, uh, Mrs. Anderson was at the other meetings, and to, just to show that it is exactly the same plan. It's the same plan that's been recorded. It's just like say to bring us in compliance with the yeah, Tewksbury bylaw to to reduce the house's area, the lot around the house. Okay, so the twenty foot uh, no cut border will still be there for um, behind proposed lot B. That's correct. That is. Yeah. That is on the plan that they're proposing to us. 
Uh, that's all that we wanted to make sure. Okay, very good. Thank you for calling. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? No other calls, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, anything else you'd like to say, Attorney Medeiros? No, I, I hopefully I was able to, through the circumstances, project what was going on. Okay. Anything else, board members? I have nothing. All right. Ray, you're on this one. Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. All right. If somebody would like to make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. Make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. Motion's been made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any discussion? I think it's very unique. And it's a very unique situation where it's half in Tuxbury, half in Bill Ricca, cemetery in the middle of it. It's just... Uh, yeah, the shape of the lot because of the uh, cemetery makes it. Uh, I, I I think it it makes sense to uh, provide this relief. All right. If somebody'd like to make a motion, I'll, I'll make the motion. Sure. To grant the variance from uh, section forty one twenty for change of lot of the by the Tuxpe zoning bylaw to facilitate the conveyance of land. On which a single family dwelling will build, be built on the plans filled with the board. Said property is located at 444 North Pilrica Road, slash 27 High Street, Pilrica. Says is map 2, lot 12, zone residential. Motion has been made. I'm looking for a second. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Hey, you're all set, Attorney Medeiros. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nancy, you want to chair the next one? No. Okay. So, me, Nancy, mm. and Ray, why don't you do another one? So, this one will be me, Nancy, and Ray. Sound good? Someone say mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Ray said yes. Yeah. Next item on the agenda Lakeside Mobile Home Court. Inc. Care of Paul Legro, under Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 8, as a party aggrieved by a decision made by the building inspector in a letter dated April 5, 2021, and a special permit under Section 3651 to allow for the reconstruction, extension, alteration, or change of a non conforming structure to install four replacement mobile homes as shown on plans filed with this board. Said property includes 8 Berkeley Street, 20 Upton Street, 120 uh, Leicester, and I didn't say that right, Street, and 124, how do I say that? Leicester? Leicester. Leicester, I said it right. Assessment mm -hmm. map 17, lots 11 and 13 zone residential. And who do we have for this one? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm, my name is Matthew Kavanaugh. I'm the attorney for Lakeside. The uh, president, Paul Legro of Lakeside, is here as well. And hey, Bruce, sir. Let me find your application here in all these papers. I'll be happy when we go to uh, in person live meetings again. Mm -hmm. Get a bigger table. Much. All right, Mr. Kavanaugh. Tell us a little bit what you're doing, please. Yes. Well, basically what we're trying to do is to replace four mobile homes that were removed from the sites because they were uh, no longer viable. And our insurance company asked us to move, you know, take them off as uh, potential liability uh, issues. And we all in all, you know, times intend to replace those with new homes. And when we actually um, got to do it, the the factories that make mobile homes were closed down during COVID for a period of time. And now they're, you know, very far behind due to lack of materials and whatnot. Um, we went to the building inspector and she provided us with the letter that's in front of you tonight that we're um, appealing. And basically this, uh, this, to this letter we've got, you know, our response is, She's treating them as uh, 
non-conforming uses, but as you'll see in the pack, in 1951, variance by this board that uh, granted the then owner uh, the ability to uh, have a park, but they referred to it as trailer park then, which the referred to today as manufactured home communities. And then in 1983, this board allowed them to expand the park. So it's our position that it's an allowed use but by the zoning bylaw as varied by those variances, not a non-conforming, uh, a pre-existing non-conforming use. Um, so the in, in that case, the abandonment would not really be an issue. Um, and then in the alternative, uh, we were asking the board for a special permit. The board finds that it is a pre-existing non-conforming use um, would suggest that it was not abandoned. And I did, you know, submit some case law. So the mere non-use doesn't rise to the level of abandonment. There's got to be an intent to abandon some action. Abandonment. In this case, there was never any intention to ban these. Things. And certainly, when you when you look at the issues, you you really look at those to the park as a whole. The park as a whole has been around for seventy years. It's always been used in mobile and bark. These particular sites at the park, um, the Mahomes move from the park itself, uh, still up to the mobile and bark. No intent to abandon it. And so I just uh, think that that the building inspector's analysis in this instance didn't take into account the fact that there was a variance that um, allowed the park first to be originated and then to be abandoned. But if if the court finds that it is pre-existing, would ask special permit, uh, which would allow it to replace those homes. And the, the board, this this board has done this with other homes at the park, um, and so that's our alternative position. I don't know if you want to go any further on that. I I, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. So the trailers, the the mobile homes were removed April 11, 2018. That's that correct. correct. Yes. Because your insurance company thought they were a liability. Correct. So they were obviously in, in disrepair. That's correct. Who owns the mobile homes? Well, usually in this instance, I'll have to ask the park manager, but usually what happens is when they get to that point, um, the owners of the mobile homes are separate individuals. But they typically will convey title to us so they don't have to pay the cost of removing the home because that's a, you know, it's a costly process. And so right. that's what usually happens. So we incur the cost of actually, you know, removing the home. And who's going to own, do you have an owner that wants to move a new mobile home onto these sites or do you buy them? Um, Jeff, what happens is the owner buys them, then sells them to, you know, you know someone who's going to occupy, be an owner occupant. Okay, so the owner of the park paid to have the old trailers removed in 2018. Correct. You you had trouble getting with all intentions of bringing new ones right in. Yes. Couldn't get them because of COVID. Yes. And now we're being told that it's. Um, not a permittable use on that site. Yes, they, well, she's saying that the, the building inspectors indicate that's an abandoned use, and I don't think that it rises to that level. If it is, if it does apply, and I don't think it does because it was, you know, it was, uh, it was never our intent to abandon those sites. Right. So if this was in the days of COVID, it would have would have been a couple of maybe a couple of months, and the new ones would have been rolling in. Yes, it would have been rolling in and we would have been able to sell them fairly quick. All right. And how big were the original ones? Um, this is a look at that. So, 8 Berkeley was 12 by 60, 22 Upton was 12 by 48. 120 Leicester was 12 by 60, and 124 Leicester was 14 by 66. And do you know how big the the ones that are coming in are? The new homes 
our the minimum width is 14 feet so we're all 14 feet and then the industry standard is 70 feet so we've got i think all of them are 70 feet um there may be one that's 66 feet because of the size of the site's a little bit smaller so 14 by 70 as opposed to 12 by a couple of 12 by 60s a 12 by 48 and a 14 by 66. correct but that's the industry standard now yes okay. so they even do these lots even have setbacks well the, see the the lot is actually the entire part right um, and and these particular sites uh, are not really lots they're just sites at the park they're, they've been fixed for a long time because um, people have you know when they were first set up we haven't changed the site we've used the same site year after year but um, when she's referring to a lot it, it, this site is not a lot it's the entire park that's the lot and that certainly hasn't been abandoned right. and uh, certainly there's no intent to abandon it so I think that um, she, you know, the building inspector sort of um, was didn't correctly refer to a lot. Okay. I, I understand. Uh, board members, any questions? I don't have any. All right. Um, shall we open it to the public? Yeah. Yeah. Being a public hearing, we'll open it to the public if the, at this time, if there's anyone on the phone. We have no calls, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm just reading 3651. So I'll read it together. She's calling it a non-conforming nature. I think that's because they're changing the size in the in the uh, the mobile or the, the what's the term now? Is it mobile home still? Um, the uh, size is now uh, fourteen feet, um, and I believe they said industry 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 standard, but that's really the it's a HUD requirement. Is that true? That's correct. So is it, and is it really a non-conforming structure to begin with? I would say it's not, but there was, there was no restriction on the size of the structures in either the 1951 variants or the 1983 variants. We, I think what was used was the industry standard back then was a little bit smaller. Basically, you went from 720 to 980, so 100. One and a half square foot. I can see where they used it because of the change in size, but it's. I don't think the difference is that big too, personally. Wish we had the old zoning bylaws. The, uh, the Tewksbury Board of Appeals, they weren't even the Zoning Board of Appeals, in, what did I just read it, 1983? Yes. They issued a variance from the requirements of Section 4, Paragraph 6H13 of the Zoning Bylaw. Be nice to know what that was. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, Been around a while, but not that long. Sorry. 
so if you um, if you look at the last page of that well the second to last page of that decision it says that uh, for additional trailer park sites located on shoreline drive or met assessors map 17 lot 79 premises located in a general residence district so i assume that was the the variance um revision at that time Yeah. All right. Um, anything else, board members? I don't have anything. Nothing for me. Nope. Anything else, Mr. Kavanaugh? No, sir. All right. Um, and we still have no callers? No callers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. If uh, somebody would like to make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. Make a motion to close both parts of the hearing. My second. Motion is made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't have anything, personally. Nothing? Nothing yes. to All right. I personally, I don't know if this is, an abandonment, you know, any other time you leave something sitting for 2 years. Yes. But we've been on COVID wow. for a year right. and a half. I, I think it yeah. would, I would be hard pressed to argue abandonment due to the nature of the last year. Right. And the lot is not abandoned. If Correct. it's lived in already, because that's 1 big lot. Right. All right. So, if somebody would like to make a motion. Now, this, what we're going to have to do here is um, we got 2 we things. We got section 3651 and we've got the party aggrieved. So, uh, which 1 do you want to start with? I think we should do the party aggrieved 1st. All right, so. Okay, I'll stop at the, the letter dated April 21 then. Mm -hmm. So make a motion to approve Lakeside Mobile Home Court Incorporated Care of Paul Legro under Mass General Laws Chapter 40A Section A as a party agreed by a decision made by the building inspector in a letter dated April 5th, 2021. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Now, before I call for a vote, keep in mind that if you vote yes, you're voting in favor of the building commissioner. You're agreeing with the building commissioner. You vote no. You're voting with the applicant. Okay. All right. So motion has been made and second. All in favor. Aye. What did I get an eye there? Did I get one eye or no eyes? Okay. No so eyes. All, all in favor is none. Opposed? Nay. 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 Three nays. All right. So you're good on that one. All right. So we're we'll second part now? Yes, please. Make a motion to approve a special permit under section 3651 to allow for the reconstruction, extension, alteration, or change of a non-conforming structure to install four replacement mobile homes as shown on the plans filed with the board. Said property includes 8 Berkeley Street, 22 Upton Street, 120 Leicester Street, and 124 Leicester Street. Assessors map 17, lots 17 and 13 zoned residential. Motion has been made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote on that one. All right, Mr. Kavanaugh, you're all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Good luck to you. you. All right. Um, I need a break. I need okay. a quick I need a quick five minute one. All right, I'm with you. All right. So we'll do a recess. We'll do uh let's do ten minutes. Okay. And a real ten minutes. All right, we're in recess. Thank you.
Rob, I think you're on mute. I was talking to my kids. That's why I'm on mute. They hide over there. Oh, there they go. All right. Everybody ready? We back? Back. All right. So who's going to be on this one? Me? Who wants to be on the last one? Nancy, you want a chair? I'm sorry, you're on mute. I think you said yes. No, I guess no. All right. No, this one's a different one for me. I don't want to chair this one. All right. Good excuse. Who wants to be on it? I'll volunteer. There you go. Mike. And I'll be on it, too. And then Nancy. Okay, good. All right, next item on the agenda. Janice S. Harum, heir of Paul K. LeBurn, deceased, for a variance from Section 4120 and Section 4130, Appendix B, for minimum lot size of the Tuxbury Zoning Bylaws to facilitate the separation and sale of two individual lots as shown on plans filed at this board, said property is located at 1176 South Street, Ronsville Road. Assesses map 109, lot 53 and 54, zoned residential. And who is here for this one? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney William Gramer for uh, Janice Harmon. And I believe she is the call in user number three. Jan, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, so she's here. All right. Um, Janice, if you could just give state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Janice Harmon, H A R M E N. My current address is 1176 South Street in Tutsbury, Mass. All right, thank you. Uh, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about what you're doing, please. Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, the issue before the court or before the, the board uh, this evening is a request for a variance in order to uh, sell, divide, uh, sell as separate lots, uh, 1176 South Street and uh, a vacant lot at Roundsville Road. Um, Share my screen. I'd like to just walk through the. Yes, please. Go ahead. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. Um, just by way of a little bit of background, um, Mrs. Harmon inherited both parcels from uh, Mr. Paul LeBrun, who died in December of 2019. Um, she is Mr. LeBrun's cousin. <clears throat> Uh, she was the executor of his estate and the his sole heir. Um, after acquiring the properties through the inheritance, she decided to try to sell them. And this issue of merger came up, which is um, a zoning doctrine that says when issues are when when two lots are owned uh, in common, they are merged for purposes of zoning. Um, the 1176 South Street lot by itself, and at the time it was created, was a, a lawful uh, 10,000 square foot lot. It was created prior to the one acre zoning uh, by law, and it has remained as a lawful pre-existing non-conforming uh, lot since that time. The Roundsville Road lot was created subsequently as part of a larger subdivision of land off of uh, Roundsville Road. Uh, and that lot by itself is a conforming lot to today's standards. It's uh, at least one acre and has 100 and in excess of 150 feet of frontage along Roundsville Road. Um, the exhibit A in the packet uh, is on the screen, and I've just highlighted 1176 South Street. You can see this lot here. Uh, is the the 10,000 square foot lot? Um, it's similar in nature to the many other lots that lie along uh, South Street. Um, I'll scroll down. The next map is the same map, but just highlighted the larger vacant lot on Roundsville Road. And again, this one acre lot is similar in nature to the other lots within that um, subdivision. So the uniqueness of this is that. 
1176 is in, in the unfortunate position of being adjacent to um, the Rounds of L Road lot, uh, which, which each of them is part of their own neighborhood, so to speak. The 1176 is mm. consistent with the lots up and down South Street uh, in that particular area of South Street. Um, but for the, the merger doctrine, um, these lots uh, could be sold as separate lots. Um, the um, this map yes. here shows you um, the Morningside uh, Park subdivision. This is when South Street was created, uh, lot 18. I'll zoom in a little bit. Lot 18 is now 1176 South Street. Could you go? Could you go full screen on your on your share there? Is that possible? Does that work? That's better. Yeah, it was better for a second. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, there you go. Zoom up on that one. All right, go ahead. So this is a plan um, showing at the time that the 1176 South Street lot was created. Um, South Street runs along here on the right side. Lot 18 is now what's 1176. And you can see back then they actually had created um, a thousand square foot lots all the way into <clears throat> what was then called Morningside Drive, it's now Brownsville Road. All these lots, uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, et cetera, those, are, those don't exist. Those are all now part of the Brownsville, Brownsville Road um, subdivision. What, um, um, what's the date on this one? It's just too small, I can't read it. Yep, uh, this is 54. December 1954. 54. Okay. It was recorded in February 1956 with the Registry of Deeds, approved October 1955, and the one acre zoning went into effect in October of 1956, the following year. So this is a lot, this is a lawful pre existing 10,000 square foot lot. And Obviously, there's an existing single family home on that lot. When was um, when was the other lot? The Roosevelt Road lot. Yep. So that one. Let's scroll down. Two years later. It was in 1967. Um, so you can see here, this is the plan that created the Roundsville Road, or one of the plans for the for the subdivision. Sorry, it's jumping around on me. Um, sorry about that. Um, that plan was recorded in September 1967. There was an earlier one in June of 1967. Um, and the LeBrun family acquired that parcel from developer C.R. Trawick and Sons in November of 1967. And nothing was ever built on it? Nothing was ever built on it. It, it remains vacant to this day. Uh, Mr. LeBrun inherited both lots from his parents in, in the packet that I submitted. I've given you the, the chain of title. Um, he came into himself common ownership as of 2011, and he continued to live at 1176 South Street until his death in 2019. Um, my client initially requested a zoning determination from the building commissioner asking that she find that the merger doctrine did not apply. There is some case law which suggests that um, if you can demonstrate that the lots have maintained their separate identities, um, that you there may be an exception to the merger doctrine. The court following 
what I would call a favorable decision on that subject, the court issued a subsequent decision, which basically said, we take no position. Um, so they sort of left that issue in limbo. Um, we argued that these two lots do have separate identities. They're separate tax bills. Um, I've submitted in the packet the assessor's record. It shows that the Roundsville Road lot is actually assessed as a vacant buildable lot with a property class code of 1300, which is under the code classification book, one is vacant land. The three stands for developable land. Um, a two would be undevelopable. So the town has this assessed at 219,000 as a vacant buildable lot. Um, taxes have been paid on that value. Or I, I should say as a buildable lot value over time. Um, the two lots have never been um, conveyed in a single deed. They were acquired by separate deeds. Um, and uh, that's another indication that they've maintained uh, their separate identities. And the, the use of lot 1176 has remained confined to its lot. There's been no spillover of structures or other use um, of the owner of 1176 into you could say the Rounds, Roundsville Road lot. Um, the building commissioner and the, the letters in the packet um, declined to find that they had not merged and indicated that uh, we should seek variance relief uh, from this board, which is the application that we've, we've submitted. Um, under the, the zoning uh, variance test, as the board's you know, fully aware, um, the three-prong test Board can grant a variance where there's unique conditions relating to, in this in this instance, the shape of the lot. Um, the shape of 1176 um, is unique in the sense that it's adjacent to and presumably merged with a larger uh, Roundsville Road lot. Um, it's um, it's part of this inadvertently part of this larger subdivision. The, uh, the second prong, if there's a literal enforcement of, of the bylaw, uh, that there'd be a hardship. Um, the hardship here is um, more in the financial side um, analysis. Uh, if, if these lots are deemed to be merged or variance relief is not granted, they can't be sold uh, separately, um, despite the fact that, as I indicated earlier, we believe they've maintained their separate uh, identities to each other. Um, they've always been uh, separately taxed as uh, separate parcels. And I think um, the third prong, more importantly, is you can grant this relief without creating any new nonconformities. We're not requesting any change um, in the shape of either lot. Um, if they are separated, the purchaser of the Roundsville Road lot would not require any further zoning relief. It, it's fully conforming. It's an acre with sufficient frontage on Roundsville Road. Um, uh, the South Street lot, again, is in a neighborhood with similar 10,000 square foot lots. Um, and the Roundsville Road lot, likewise, is in a similar neighborhood with one acre lots with single family homes on them. Um, this is a pretty unique situation. There's only one other instance I can think of. Um, there was a, before this board, um, I think Mr. Dugan, I don't I think you might recall, you were, you were there at the time, of course. There was a lot on Troll Road and uh, Mount, uh, Mount Joy Drive. And yeah, that was actually situation. just a few months but ago. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah, a few months. Um, what's that? Was it really a couple of years ago? It was, it was, yeah, it was 2014, I believe. Jesus, feels like it was just uh, yesterday. So same thing, it was a small trail road lot and the owner had purchased um, one of the subdivision lots on Mount Joy Drive and that stayed vacant for some time. And um, again, very unique situation, same here. Um, you've got this undersized lot, which is conforming but for being adjacent to uh, 
a, a conforming lot which is uh, merged, presumably under the law. Um, I think the other thing to take into consideration, this isn't a situation where um, we're creating new non-conformities. Um, I think that's important. Some of the some of the case law that I've um, seen where this type of request is denied is where you've got two undersized lots when when you're done splitting them again. So you know zoning always seeks to increase conformity. And so if we were if we were looking to split these lots and create two non-conforming lots, um, I think it would be a different situation. Here you've got an existing, but for the merger doctrine, an existing non-conforming um, grandfathered lot, which no changes will be made to that, and you have a fully conforming one acre lot by today's um, standards. So I, I have a question. Sure. Why, I understand exactly what you're trying to do here. Why are we looking at 4130? What table of dimensional requirements? Because you got a lot that was created in 1954 to 56, somewhere in there. 10,000 square yep. feet, which was fine in 1954. So like you said, that's an existing non-conforming. And the other lot is an acre with 150 feet of frontage. And you're not looking to build anything on it. Why am I looking at the table of dimensional requirements? Because if they're presumed to have merged and you're then granting variance relief to the smaller lot, you are in essence splitting it off. And by today's standards, the 1176 South Street would have to be one acre and 150 feet of frontage, which it doesn't. So the dimensional requirement table is is why. I think what's getting to is, that table. is on Troll Road, we we made, or, you know, any case like this, we made a determination of whether the lots were in fact merged. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a variance, it was, are they truly merged? Because if, if, if we determine that they were never merged, or they shouldn't have been merged, then you don't need anything. Correct. And, and so you're aware I did file at the same time as the variance application. I did file an appeal application um, of the building commissioner's letter, but I, I chose to just have the public hearing on the variance in the event you granted the variance relief, the, the merger issue wouldn't need to be addressed. Right, but how can we... How can we, how can we issue a variance on a lot that's one lot? You follow me? We we need to make a determination of whether it's two lots or one lot. And I don't think you do that just by uh, the forty one thirty. So the building commissioner actually. Reference forty one twenty. Right, I see both of them. I'm just, I'm a little confused as to why we're going down this road because if it, because it, if, I would like, I would to, like say to say something. something. Sure. H hang on, Jan. Just let. If if we're looking at at a variance, then that kind of leads to the assumption that it's two lots. And they're, they're saying, the town is saying that it's one lot. Well, if it's one lot, you don't need a variance. It's plenty big. You follow me, right? I do, yeah. Um, I guess the, the question was, which issue should you address first? Um, Building commissioner's position is that she doesn't see that there's an exception to the merger doctrine, um, but indicated variance relief would would solve the issue. So that's why I brought that forward first. 
I just I don't see how variance relief would solve that issue because it's the town is saying it's one lot, right? They're saying it was merged and it's one lot. You're saying, and I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with the other side. The town is saying it's one lot. You're saying it's not one lot. It's lot 53 and 54. It's two separate lots. It's been two separate lots its entire life. And now you're asking for a variance on what the town believes to be one lot for dimensional requirements. You, you don't need you don't need a variance on dimensional requirements on your one lot. I, I'm just I'm unclear. I think it's um, I'm sorry. I, I'm just unclear if we're going down the right road here. I mean, the plans in the town zoning map and assessor, everybody's indicating it and showing it as two lots. That's the, the way the plans show as they're recorded with the registry. Right. Um, in other words, I don't need I don't need a plan approved that um, puts that dividing line between the two parcels. Right. Um, right. You're not moving a line. You're not. And you, it's clearly two separate lots. They've just combined them because you have an existing non-conforming next to a conforming. And if the same owner con owns both, then they put them together and call it a conforming lot. Right. They're deemed. They're they're combined for for the zoning analysis. If you were to apply for permits and so forth, um, they are separate lots, and it's. Mm. The issue comes when you go to sell. Right. And you you have a deed that conveys a portion of what's presumed to be one one large lot. Right, but like you said in your in your opening, that you have two separate deeds. Correct. So it's not one deed; it's two deeds. Right. So. Has it ever been combined? I, I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if 4130 is the right thing to do. Because if, if they were never combined, I mean, I know you understand what I'm saying. If they were never combined, then you have two conforming lots. You have the, the small lot that was conforming, you know, prior to 1980, 1992, 10,000 square feet or less. So you're fine there. And then you, you one that was in 1967. It's an acre with 150 feet of frontage, so you're fine there. So we basically need to make a determination if is is it one lot or two. I, I just I don't know. Any input, board well, members? Well, I mean, if you if you if you feel comfortable making that determination tonight, we... I I don't because that's not the way it was advertised. I can't whether I feel comfortable or not because it's not advertised as that. And being a public hearing, we have to advertise. Uh, um, quick question. Yes. What, what was the purpose? I, I saw the building commissioner's letter, but what was the purpose of going to the building commissioner in the first place? Were you seeking a permit? No, just a zoning determination under section seven. Um, if, if if the building commissioner agreed that there was no zoning violation potentially by selling one lot or selling the lots separately from each other, it, it, it's as soon as you sell the lots and, and record a new deed for either parcel that it would trigger a zoning violation and both lots become problematic under one infects the other. You can't okay. split. So. But if there was a, if the building commissioner, who's the, the, the enforcement officer, said, "I agree that that they can be sold separately," then there's no issue. Uh, right, I, I understand. I was just when I I understood that asking for a variance, I was like, "What are the specifics of the variance?" There's nothing there. It's just right. a variance. Yeah. I, I I presume she viewed it as um, if 1176 were to be sold separately that by today's standards, it's a non-conforming lot. And so the variance would effectively approve 
that that lot as an as it exists. It's a it's a smaller ten thousand square foot lot for which you you'd grant a variance from the one acre requirement. That's how I viewed it. Um, right, Mr. Chair, you know. we could certainly um, if 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 it's if it's the board's position to deal with the merger issue first, we could. I would ask to continue the hearing, and I can give notice of the um, appeal hearing. Yeah, uh, I just and have them both I, on. I'm at okay the same to time. I'm okay to do that. I just I want to talk about this a little more because I just like we were just saying it, it's. I'm reading the denial letter now. It's two lots are continuous and have merged. A variance would be required prior to any building permit being issued. We're not looking but, for a building permit. You're not, right. And you're not, if the two lots are merged, then it's one lot. You can't build two houses on it. Well, I think the, obviously the building permit references is, is referring to Roundsville Road. So if you sold 1176, and sold Roundsville Road separately, you, that the purchaser would would apply for a building permit, but Roundsville Road would be would be infected by the undersized South Street lot. You'd have to sell both lots together. Infectious invalidity would make them both invalid. So, right. Um, so even if we gave you a variance on, and which lot would you be looking for a variance from? For Roosevelt Road or? The other one, South well, Street. It would be it would apply primarily to eleven seventy six South Street. Right. But according to the town, it's one lot. So eleven seventy six and the no name lot on Roosevelt Road are one lot. So what am I giving you a variance for? And again, I'm just I'm just talking this out. I'm not Yeah, I hear you. It's certainly not crystal clear. Um my my understanding is the variance is in order to allow South Street. It doesn't make it two lots. It's still only one lot. Again, I, I th this merger doctrine is, um, is um, you know a unique concept. They're they are two separate lots. They're they're not one unless unless you're. Unless you go to to sell, um, or otherwise apply for permit and so forth. So I'm reading, I, 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 forty one twenty two, just forty one twenty as well. Doesn't um, doesn't really apply either because if if you could get a determination that it was two lots. Then you wouldn't be changing the size. Correct. You, so you wouldn't need that either. I think it's more. I think it's more of a determination of whether it's one lot or two. And I, I'm very willing to continue to next month to uh, hash this out a bit more. I just, I don't think a variance would do it for you. Yeah, I mean, the only other option would be under 4120 to change the shape of a lot. But I, I think um, to your point, Mr. Chairman, you, you're being asked to create two lots, <laughs> not change right. the shape of one. So right. um, I'm happy to, um, if, if, if you're willing to continue the hearing tonight, I can, I can have the appeal application advertised and noticed for next meeting as well as this this application so they both both be available yeah I, I think that's the way to go i think i think that's a very good idea all right and we'll be in person so maybe we can get the town attorney out there too that's right i don't know if you heard me say earlier but we got an email stating that this will be our last I virtual. Did hear that. Yeah. virtual meeting. So excited. I am too. All right. So um did your client want to say something before we continue? 
I think she does. Um, go we ahead, just Jan. can't hear her. We can't hear her. We can't hear you. Okay, I'm on my phone and I'm in person. We can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. The configuration of the two lots. One of them, the one on Roundsville Road, is a different development. It's a circular road and the lots were cut into pie-shaped pieces or a slice of pizza. Okay, it's triangular. Now, on the bottom right-hand corner, we have the little 1176 rectangle attached to the corner of the large 40,000 whatever acre, 40,000 square feet. Um, it doesn't configure into a lot. It's a triangle plus a little rectangle. And there is no way that I could sell that as a lot. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, we, Jan, they're, we they're aware of that. Yep. Yeah, we, we get it. We get it. And what we were discussing was it's, we've had a couple of these cases now and we understand exactly what you're saying. And I just, I don't think you, you're looking for the right thing. So we're just going to expand on it a little bit. We'll come back again next month and uh, do a little more work on it. Okay. I, I appreciate that. All right. All right. So if somebody would like to make a motion to uh, continue to our next month's <laughs> hearing, which is June 29th. I'd like to make a motion to continue Janice S. Harmon, heir of um, Paul K. Harmon, to our next meeting of June 29th, 2021. At 6.30. At 6.30. Motion has been made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so you're continued to next month. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What did I do with my agenda? Here it is. Any old business board members? Any new business? Sounds like we're going back. Sounds like we're going back to town hall. That'll be nice. Great. Pretty excited. I am. My first one. Get to see Ray all over again and meet Mike in person. There you go. Will it, <laughs> will it be your first one, Mike? Yeah. It'll be my first one. At Town Hall, yeah. Yep. Huh. It'll be like my 97th million one. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, if somebody would like to make a motion to adjourn, if there's nothing further. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, okay. Don't forget. Hold on one second. The. Sure. Uh, the packet that we were just looking at. Mm -hmm. Don't lose that one. No, I'll we'll need it for next week, yep. next month. That's a nice one. Colored pages in it and everything. I know. He did a good job. Did a nice job. All right. Um, motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Enjoy the nice long weekend. See you, you too. See you guys in a month. See, See you in a month. month. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.